Running is not just running, and if you want to unlock the absolute best version of yourselves, then there are always other aspects you need to address, none more divisive and confusing than your diet. So in this video, I'm going to talk you through my life and the hard truths I had to learn and solve about my diet in order to improve my running. Some of them were not easy to implement and are an ongoing battle, but if it was easy, everyone would do it. And do me this deal, if I teach you something new here today, consider subscribing to the channel to learn more about your running and hopefully yourself. And while I'm on my long run, I may as well start with what I think is probably the most important hard truth of them all when it comes to diet, and that's philosophically and physically. And that is the fact that you cannot outrun a bad diet. And if you've been watching the channel for a long time, you're gonna be no stranger to this nugget. But when we talk about philosophically why we run, if you run for any other reason than trying to be better than trying to be a healthier person day in, day out, then you might wanna think about your reasons for running. I look at it like this, just trying to be better, just trying to be healthier. That's a process-based goal, as in, it never ends. There's no end point, you can't win fitness. But if you get into running for more like losing weight or being able to run a certain pace or time in a race, that's a goal, that's an outcome goal, and it has an end point. And what happens then? And these are all right to get you in the door. They're good reasons to get you in the door, but once you're in the door, you need to change it to a process-based run. And then there's the physical, because if you think starting running is good enough without addressing poor diet choices, and we've all been there, then again, that's a hard truth that you're gonna have to think again about because you could be lean, you can be skinny, you can still be unhealthy. So I think what I'm basically saying is you need to add running into your life as one way of being healthier, but diet is equally as important and needs to be treated as such. So the hard truth that I learned here is that crash diets generally don't work or they certainly don't work for me and the evidence says that they don't work for most people by the way who want to continue training crash diets can work for pretty much anyone if you want to lose quite a substantial amount of weight but if you want to then continue training at the same time maybe the two aren't compatible and here's why when you restrict your calories in a significant way as in you really reduce them from say let's say a male average is 2500 and you go down to 1000 or 1,500 per day, what you're doing is essentially, for the short term, starving your body, putting it in starvation mode. So you're gonna lose fat because your body's gonna start metabolizing it, trying to break down for energy, but also your body might start breaking down your muscle mass to take some protein that it needs. Also, you might lose water, which makes you think, oh, I'm losing loads of weight but actually you're losing water, so there might be a significant weight loss, but it might not be the right weight. And the way I look at it is this, rather than a crash diet, rather than dramatically restricting your calorie intake, if you flatten out that curve a little bit and reduce the calorie intake a little bit for a longer period of time so that you can still train with high quality because you've got, because you've got energy there, but you're also in a slight calorie deficit, a, you're gonna lose the right type of weight, as in you're gonna burn fats and you're not gonna break down protein and you're not gonna lose muscle mass because of it. And B, you're not gonna have the after effect of going into starvation mode, which is the body is gonna slow down your metabolism. It's gonna try and protect you and preserve you. And the first thing it does is slow down the metabolism so that you don't burn as much energy. So you might find yourself actually losing in weight but then it flattening out quite significantly because your body's trying to maintain your weight and trying to preserve it rather than continue this weight loss if you flatten the curve. So I guess what I'm saying is that a slight restriction in calories over a long period of time with training can work, crash diets and trying to train. I wouldn't advise it, that's as best as I can do. I'm not going to say don't do it, I'm not an expert but I wouldn't advise it. Probably the most divisive topic out there in the world of running and diet is whether you need carbohydrates in your diet or not. Well, I can only give you my opinion, but the hard truth is that a body's most readily available energy source is glycogen, which is essentially derived from carbohydrates. So it would stand to reason that you need energy that is readily available. 
and in my opinion, a low carb or no carb diet, as appealing as it might sound to some, doesn't work well for the majority of runners. Getting energy from fat is possible, but it's a messy, inefficient and long process. So in a pinch, when you need glycogen, but you don't have it, you might actually be in trouble. And yes, you can train your body to be better at metabolizing fat so that you don't touch your carb stores as much. But there are levels to this, different intensities that it could work at. And everyone's different, I understand that. But I also follow the weight of evidence. It's never unanimous, but Kenyan elite and non-elite runners would laugh at you if you suggested cutting carbs from your diet. And I'd be interested if you could find examples of anyone other than an ultra runner at the elite level that has success with this approach. So yes, a few athletes can compete with no carbs, but the hard truth is, most of us can't. And how about this for a mind-bending hard truth? that fasted runs are both beneficial and not beneficial. And I know that might sound confusing, but what I mean is that there is good evidence that once or twice a week, so long as the run is easy, you can go out without having eaten before. And it's actually really good for your running because it trains your body to metabolize fats. You don't need to rely on carbohydrates, but the benefits kind of end after about two everything else you should fuel before and you should certainly fuel after so if you're consistently going out without eating before running you need to look at how you're approaching it because there's space in your training for both of those approaches if you do it right actually mikey just made a good point that i might want to add in here mikey no, i mean benny will be the first to admit we're, we're we're different we've got different approaches with different runners but what he would call a fasted run i would call probably just rolling out of bed quickly trying to get one in before work and not even thinking about eating but that's essentially what my fasted run is it's getting one in getting a run in before work <laughs> yes. yeah. is necessity necessity rather than design is how you put it isn't it and which is fair enough we understand that quite a lot of people have to because they can't fit in the time to eat wait run and i get that but there's there's a space for everything in your training now this is a hard truth but actually was one of the hardest truths for us to realize and that is probably over the years you've got what I don't know if it's an actual term but you what we call portion distortion portion distortion is probably best explained by Matt Fitzgerald so I had a, a, a chat with one of my favorite authors Matt Fitzgerald a while ago but basically what we see portion distortion is that over time we're eating too much because we're stopped relying on our feelings of satiety. Is that the right word? Like when you feel like you're Sociate, full up. So, yeah. Satiate. 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 That's going in. <laughs> and my biggest failure is that quite often I eat so quickly that I don't get the chance to listen to my internal signals that I'm full and I just completely overdo it when actually if I start to really tune in I think I would eat a lot less. I mean if you look at this portion this is a lot less than I used to eat isn't it? Yeah actually we used to have massive bowls that we would just fill. Yeah I think some people say it's our parents fault because when we were kids it was like you were taught to finish everything on your plate but you don't have to do that. Yeah. So how about you go with this? This is what I would suggest for this hard truth is, when you're hungry, eat. And when you're not hungry, don't eat. And when you're full up, stop eating. And when you're not full up, keep eating. Tune into the internal signals rather than what you believe you need to eat or the, so the sizes you need. Learn absolutely the hard way is that if you want a good long run or race experience, then in-run fueling has to be a part of the conversation. Our bodies have enough energy available for about 90 minutes of exercise. And whilst various training methods can extend this, you simply cannot run indefinitely without putting fuel back in. Intensity or how hard you're running is of course relevant and personal to you. But I know that I probably could manage around two hours of easy running without fueling, but I couldn't last a hard half marathon of around 80 minutes without taking gels. You have to learn yourself. But my rationale for in-run fueling is very simple. When we run long periods, we tire. And that drop in energy can change the way that our body moves. And changing the way our body moves can lead to overuse injuries. So why risk it? 
I fuel on runs of around 80 minutes or above so that I can guard against energy depletion leading to possible injury. I want the best quality from all of my sessions in every way. And the hard truth is, for longer or more intense sessions, fueling's gonna be key. And the final hard truth is this, what works for me won't work for you, won't work for your coach, won't work for your friend, won't work for Joe Bloggs down the running club. What I'm saying is you need to experiment with your diet because there are a ton of people out there saying, this diet is good, this diet is good, I do this and this has worked for me. And that's great because it probably has worked for them. But we're all different, we're all totally different. And Mary and I know that because what I eat on the night before a race, for example, Mary absolutely cannot because she always has a bad race experience when she has some kind of carb pasta heavy type meal. Whereas I love a pizza or I love a burger and chips before race night. I know it sounds bad, but I know it works for me because psychologically it also works for me. So you need to just Find out what works for you by experimenting, by trying different breakfasts or having some fasted runs or having different meals before your race or your training session and see what your body responds to well, what gels that you take within your runs. It is a wonderfully diverse world out there. We're all so different and so we shouldn't think that because this person down the running club has said you absolutely must do this diet or eat this thing before race day, it'll work for you. It might not and that's okay because experimentation is fun. It's how we grow and you know what? It might completely change the way that you look at your running and training just by tweaking it slightly. Doesn't need to be all at once. Doesn't need to be change your entire diet. It could just be adding one thing or removing one thing at a time. Does that work? And it's as simple as that. And that's the joy of the process. It's like a puzzle. It's fun to try and solve. So solve it. And like I said earlier in the video, if you learned something new here today or I made you think differently in some kind of way, then I would be honored if you considered subscribing to the channel so I can help you some more, but no hard sell. And if you like the video, you're definitely gonna like this one, which was the original of this concept, which was the nine hard truths of being a runner. And they're things I wish that I'd known before I'd taken up running. As always, we're here to help you. So let us do it. I'll see you next Sunday.